Kia ora, my dear friends, a warm welcome back. I wanted to do a follow up to the Carly Russell story, as one of you guys asked me to, and I hadn't initially thought of that, but actually, this case is, to me, it's quite fascinating. And I think some of you guys have agreed with some of my thoughts in the initial video, which if you haven't seen, by the way, I recommend you maybe watch that first and then come back to this one. So Carly, it would seem, has been charged with two misdemeanors. This, to my understanding, I'm no expert on American law by any stretch of the imagination, but so it's kind of an interesting one. It's not a super heavy penalty, to my understanding. However, it can carry up to a year in jail, maybe a bit more because of the particularly I think when cases, you know, hit the public imagination in this way, I think sometimes the judges and stuff kind of want to make an example of the person. So, I mean, I kind of hope that doesn't happen to her, but I think this is one of those cases where it could. One of the factors that has been brought into the picture is that, of course, everything she did was very triggering for people who have actually had loved ones kidnapped in the way that she described in that way, it seems to me that they're already building a picture of, in a way, you could say, kind of psychological harm that she's done, not only, you know, in the wasting of the police time, which is more of a practical issue and not insignificant because police time is money and all of that. And other people were involved, obviously, in the search for her, quite a significant number. This narrative of, you know, causing harm to those who have actually been through similar and, in fact, allegedly some of them, those people who've been victims themselves, helped organise searches, makes it, it gives it another quality, doesn't it? Almost of cruelty, really, even though I'm sure, you know, I have a real strong suspicion that that was never her intention. The more I read about this case, guys, the more I, I can't help but feel my initial idea about this being a kind of belated message that speaks to something from her past that probably was real and maybe not at all exactly the way that she's painted this story because the story in places is quite far-fetched. I do remember that when I heard she alleged she'd been bundled into an 18-wheel truck, I thought in my mind, I know in America you can get huge trucks and things, but that almost sounds like a tank and I did wonder about that. I thought, I'm not even aware that such a thing exists really but I, I thought wow you know that, that was my initial sense was to believe what she said right so now on reflection it makes me think okay that was kind of a bit of a red flag perhaps in that she's elaborated in her story to to make it sound as kind of dramatic as possible another element which I didn't know about initially is that she apparently stated that a man and a woman asked her once they got her in the location that they'd kidnapped her to they asked her to undress and again this gives me another sense it kind of adds a bit more weight to my suspicion that this person Carly may have really suffered something pretty awful in her childhood that has kind of come back in this form, in this kind of very egregious form, I mean, no doubt she's caused harm by what she's done. So I don't mean to kind of just excuse all of that. But I do think, as I've said before, there's something in the story that she's created that has its own message. And I would be really, really interested to know if that ever is investigated. I mean, I'm guessing it won't be, right? This is the thing about criminalising people sometimes we have to when the when the crime is very serious which this one actually isn't right some of the work that I do and, and Mark has done particularly what I've done in the past working with offenders who have harmed children and then got home detention you know um, that's an unequal punishment for the crime in my view right so if you've harmed someone if you've captured someone on on a video to use that for your own purposes later you know these kinds of crimes in this country are often not heavily punished so when you think about this story of something where someone's made up a story they've wasted police time yes you could argue she could pay a fine to cover 
the money that the police used to look for her, etc. They're talking about prison. You know, that's that's just shows you something of how the criminal justice system around the world varies and varies again, depending on if the person is, you know, a person of colour, a black person or not. And similarly, we find the same here, that in my experience working with offenders, with those who have criminally offended, there's often a much heavier penalty for those who are Māori here, our indigenous tangata whenua, our people of the land, right? They often, in my experience of working with the police in the work that I've done, they will often have a much heavier penalty. It doesn't even matter whether it's a young person. I've had children. I've worked with many children now. It's really fascinating to see the racism up close. And believe you me, my loves, when I've had the opportunity, which I, I'm very privileged to have had, particularly in a couple of cases that I've worked on, to really educate and confront the system on how the system and the people within it and those people unwittingly often really you know racism is is kind of blind and stupid a lot of the time it doesn't recognize itself right but you know I've had the the real privilege of being able to particularly in one case go in and really do a complete kind of overhaul of even the language that was being used around a child, right? And really criminalizing language, which we never use when it comes to young children. We never do that here anyway. In the States, that's another matter, a very different matter. In the States, children are often punished the same rigor as if they were an adult. We don't generally do that here. We don't go to that extreme. However, the system is very much rigged against those who are Generally, it's against Māori, I would say. In this case, to me, is fascinating in terms of how it's being taken up. And the other aspect, which I didn't mention initially, but I don't know, I'm kind of going in blind, obviously, and so I'm just offering this tentatively. I do wonder whether this young woman might have an intellectual disability or whether there's been any psych assessment to kind of ensure that she really does fully understand what she's done as an adult, right, as the, at the age that she is, or whether she has an age that's actually younger than what she, you know, physically appears to be. There's another case in the media here in Aotearoa at the moment, and it's a very, very distressing case. It's related to a mother and what she's done to her children, right? It's pretty serious, right? So you can tap out right now if you don't want to hear any more. For those of you staying it's really another one, another case, huge case here in Aotearoa, in fact, that has again captured the imagination of the nation. It occurred when the pandemic was much more prevalent in our minds. The pandemic hasn't gone away anywhere, actually, but the language that we use around it and the, the lies we've been told about it actually mean that people think that it has. And of course, oh, the emergency phase is over. Everyone heard it's over. <laughs> and actually, the World Health Organization said the emergency phase is over. Everyone conveniently missed that bit out, right? So we'll park that. But the point was at the time, it happened when the whole nation's attention was focused very much elsewhere. And this family came over to Aotearoa from South Africa. And unfortunately, due to many, many factors, and this is actually a case I have delved deeply into because it was so sad. And I don't know, because... I think having worked with children recently, it, it felt different to me. I hadn't done some of the work that I've done in this country now. I may have not taken that much attention, paid much attention to it, but somehow it really, it really touched my heart, this one. And I won't go into it too much. I certainly won't devote a whole episode to it because ugh, I have enough things that are potentially impinging upon the well-being of this channel. So I don't need any extra things right now, really. The... There isn't enough appetite for that kind of content from me, so I won't, I won't go too far into it, except to say that, again, we see the narrative around this woman, this mother, who, who kind of did something heinous to her children. I'm going to just link below. In fact, I'm not going to actually say. I will link the story below, my friends, and you can have a read of that. And I encourage you just to have a glance. Don't get into the detail because it's pretty gruesome, actually. I wouldn't recommend that. But have a look just to get... A sense of what I'm saying 
And the point is, again, I'm struck by the narratives around this woman who is a white woman from South Africa who came here voluntarily with her husband and her family and the under such duress and stress with lots of kind of factors in her past that meant that she was actually quite fragile by the time they arrived here as a family and having to arrive here and being under a lot of stress in South Africa, arriving here under a lot of stress in a, in a time where we were in lockdown and all of these kinds of things, it kind of, she broke really and did something that she cannot take back. But what you hear in our media and certainly even even among my own my own friends really in terms of the corridor the conversation we have online around this has been very much like we can't possibly know what this woman has been through it's terrible you know we can't know the stress that she was under the whole kind of the whole energy around this woman, at least initially, this may change. And I actually haven't followed the story to its conclusion. I think she may have been charged. The trial may have ended. But the point is, again, I just want to bring our attention to that, that as one of my Māori sisters, I call this this woman who's this incredible activist. I won't name her, but we we are sisters to one another. She considers me a sister. I consider her a sister. And I absolutely adore, admire and respect this woman so profoundly. And, and we had a conversation about this. And I said, she was saying, really, isn't it striking that this white woman has all the, com- the compassion in the world? And yet when my people do this, she's speaking as a Maori woman. When my people do this, you call us savages and, you know, complete condemnation. We've spoken on this channel about the discrepancy, the differences between the number of Māori women who are mums or Māori people who experience tragedy around maternal mortality or problems during pregnancy versus the non-Māori population. So again, we see a real mirroring of other cultures in our culture. In the UK, there was a case recently where this young woman, young black woman, she was actually a YouTuber, and she died during pregnancy because she wasn't listened to by her doctors and her nurses. And she died eight months pregnant. There's cases all all the time. So in, in the UK, I believe it's six times the rate black women die or people from ethnic minorities die versus white. And in America, it's three times. So three times as many black women will die during the course of their pregnancy versus white. These, this is my understanding. You know, if you want to dig, dig into the statistics and correct me, by all means, feel free. But that's my understanding. I'm pretty sure I am right about that. So again, we have to always keep in mind these layers, right? Because the law certainly generally is not nuanced like that. It just is blind, as I say, you know, that racism is blind. The people who unfortunately have power often don't recognise how their biases are impacting upon the way that they are conducting themselves. So, as I say, when I've had the good privilege to and the grace to kind of step in on behalf of especially a child and a Māori child, for example, I've really gone in there with gusto, believe you me. So, (laughs) you know... I want the, the whoever's involved in the care of that child, and usually it's schools and things of that nature, in, in my experience when I've done that, that they kind of come away at least thinking, oh, hey, what I was thinking was really effed up, really flawed in my thinking. And I hadn't actually thought through what I was doing, what language we were using. So let's see, what will the legal system do with Carly? You know, frankly... I pray for that girl, to be honest, and I really hope that her lawyer is kind of courageous and will speak up for her. No matter what, everyone deserves representation. A woman here that I just referenced who harmed her three beautiful angelic girls, angelic looking. uh, That sounds like they were a handful. Children always are a handful, right? That's just a given. (laughs) Anyone who's a parent or a carer knows that, you know, yeah, so... I don't know. It will just be really interesting to see how this unfolds. But there's already hints that, yeah, it might not go so so great for Carly. So I'm thinking about her. I don't know about you guys. What are your thoughts? How do you see it now? I mean, do you think that justice has been done? Like she's been charged and 
she paid for her bond. So I understand she's not in prison right now, but she's looking at potentially a year. So yeah, let's see what happens, guys. I look forward to hearing your comments again. Thank you so much for your beautiful insights and thoughtful, respectful comments that you shared with me for the first sharing of this. I look forward to more of the same if you can. And if you're new around here, a warm welcome. My name is Gwendolyn and we are the Soul Food Fano. That's our community. You are so warmly welcome. I hope that you will like this video, comment, say hi if you're new especially, and subscribe. Subscribe to the channel because we don't shy away from tough subjects every now and then. I just have to be a bit careful because, you know, <laughs> Everything works within a system and I have got a pretty good handle of this social media system at this point. And I know that me looking the way I do, I can only say a few things <laughs> of this nature every once in a while before, you know, I may come a cropper. And that goes double when the community doesn't support the videos. So like if I created content that was a bit more challenging in its content, and everyone kind of galvanized around it, liked it, shared it, commented, then the algorithm would be more forgiving to me. That's the thing you need to know, right? So keep that in mind when you ask me to cover certain subjects, because I won't always say yes, because of that reason, right? It really requires the support of your community if you're going to take things of this nature up, right? And somebody who I admire on YouTube, and I recommend that you follow her. She's a huge YouTuber, wonderful woman, absolute powerhouse. Fumi, put her name up on the screen. I absolutely adore, adore this woman. And she is so courageous in what she covers on her channel. And she can because she's got over half a million subscribers, I believe. And they're really engaged, right? She's got the community is like an army you know, the Fumi Nation, right? And I'm part of the Fumi Nation, by the way. So I want to give a shout out to her because I just adore this woman. She's a digital auntie to a lot of people. So check out her channel. She doesn't know I'm doing this. She doesn't know I exist, by the way. This isn't like a, you know, you scratch my back, I'll scratch as if, you know, I'm, I'm nobody on YouTube, guys. This is a thing you need to understand. So I'm just saying that of the goodness of my heart. And when I, when something is exceptional, when someone is exceptional in their work, then it, it deserves praise. So my loves, thank you as always for being here. Thank you for listening in. I look forward to hearing your thoughts. I'll see you in the next one. Kia ora.